Hello, I'm Kate Morgan, an acute care nurse practitioner working in cardiology. I've recently certified in heart failure nursing from the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses, and today I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about aldosterone antagonist to take care of your heart failure patient and pass the certified heart failure nursing exam. So let's get started. In this lecture, you're going to learn who should be on this medication, how does this medication work, what side effects should you look out for, what possible interactions with other medications, what trials were done which revealed its effectiveness, and what labs should I monitor. Aldosterone antagonists are also referred to as aldosterone receptor antagonists, potassium sparing diuretics, and mineral corticoid receptor antagonist, or MRAs. Two medications in this class are spironolactone, with the uh, trade name of aldactone, and aplerinone, with the trade name Inspra. And below, I've listed the common dosages that we start at and uh, the target dose. So who should be on this medication? For this, we need to talk about the New York Heart Association class one through four. In order to decide which number to give your patient, you have to know their current level of activity. So a good question to ask your patient is, what level of activity produces symptoms? Symptoms such as shortness of breath, palpitations, angina. Number one, no physical limitation in activity. Number two, slight limitation with ordinary physical activity. Number three, marked limitation in activity but comfortable at rest. And number four, signs and symptoms at rest. So the first indication is a New York Heart Association class two through four with an ejection fraction of 35% or less. The second indication is post-acute MI with heart failure symptoms or a history of diabetes and an ejection fraction of less than 40%. Now, the caveat is that they should already be on other guideline-directed medical therapy, such as beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs. You want to start those medications first. If your patient is tolerating those medications, meaning they're not hypotensive and their renal function is stable, then consider adding the aldosterone antagonist for further reduction in morbidity and mortality. Now, who are you not going to give these medications to? It's contraindication, contraindicated for patients with a creatinine of greater than 2.5 in men or greater than 2.0 in women or an estimated glomerular filtration rate of less than 30 and or potassium of five or greater. So how does this medication work? There are a few mechanisms at play here. This class of medication stops the binding of aldosterone to the mineral corticoid receptors in the nephron, which ultimately causes sodium and water excretion. This works on the sodium channels. Secondly, it blocks the sodium and potassium ATP, ATPS channels so that potassium is not excreted in the urine. It also inhibits cardiac extracellular matrix and collagen deposition, which reduces cardiac fibrosis. And the other mechanism is that it reduces ventricular remodeling, which is the change in size, shape, structure, and function. What side effects should you look out for? Number one is hyperkalemia. And the second one is more so with spironolactone as opposed to aplerinone, gynecomastia. So that's breast swelling in males or even breast pain. Uh, the other uh, potential side effects, uh, impotence in males or menstrual irregularities for females. What are possible interactions with other medications? Make sure they're not on any potassium supplementation and caution against potassium-rich foods or salt substitutes. Uh, also, we are very cautious uh, with giving 
aldosterone antagonist in addition to patients on ACE inhibitors and a ARBs and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. But as we'll talk about later, how we're going to closely monitor those patients that are on both of those. So what trials were done which revealed its effectiveness? So the first, the landmark RAILS trial, which is Randomized Aldactone Evaluation Study. This was done in 1999, and it looked at the benefit of adding spironolactone to ACE inhibitor. And it showed a reduction of 35 of 30% 30 in all-cause mortality, as well as reduced risk of sudden cardiac death and heart failure hospitalization. There was, however, a 10% incidence of gynecomastia or breast pain. Now, the emphasis trial, which is a plerinone in mild patient hospitalization and survival study in heart failure, also revealed a significant reduction in death and hospitalization with a less than 1% incidence of gynecomastia or breast pain. One other trial I'd like to mention is the Ephesus trial, which assessed the impact of a plerinone on mortality in patients after an acute MI with an ejection fraction of less than 40% with clinical signs of heart failure. This showed significant reduction in all-cause mortality at 30 days in addition to using guideline-directed medical therapy. So now that my patient is on an aldosterone antagonist, what labs should I monitor? So when starting this medication, you will need to monitor renal function um, as well as potassium. So before starting this, make sure you have a baseline basic metabolic panel and um, a potassium level. So if they're hospitalized and receiving IV diuretics, you'll already be monitoring these uh, lab values anyway. Um, if you're just starting this medication as an outpatient, it is recommended that you check the baseline basic metabolic panel, but in three days recheck, as well as seven days after, and then monthly until stabilization. If they've been hospitalized, and we usually check basic metabolic panel as well as magnesium levels while being on um, IV diuretics, then the next time that they can have their labs drawn is with the seven-day heart failure follow-up. So important key points to remember is to consider adding an aldosterone antagonist to patients with New York Heart Association class two through four heart failure with reduced ejection fraction or post-acute MI with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. Number two, monitor renal function and potassium. Number three, remember that your contraindications include a creatinine of greater than 2.5 in males and greater than, that should say greater than 2.5 uh, 2.0 in females, or a GFR less than 30, or potassium greater than 5. And the fourth point I'd like you to remember is that the RAILS trial did show 30% mortality benefit with spironolactone, but 10% instance of gynecomastia in men. Here is my list of references that I've used for this presentation. Um, this one is the second book listed. So this is the book um, by the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses, and it is their review book, which you can find on their website. And of course, as a disclaimer, all decisions related to patient care should be made in consultation with care providers. So thank you for your attention. And also come join my Facebook group for more education and also collaboration with other healthcare professionals in the heart failure world. Currently, I have over 400 members, most of which are nurse practitioners. Uh, and this Facebook group is called Heart Failure Care Fellowship. 
Thank you. See you next time.